In this introduction video, I'm going to cover the main toolpath strategies in Enroute. I have some text created that I'm going to use to demonstrate the toolpaths with. The different toolpaths in Enroute are referred to as strategies. I'm going to start with the routing offset strategy because it's one of the most commonly used. The strategy dialog is very similar between all toolpath strategies. The top pane indicates the tools currently being used in that strategy. The middle pane lists all of the tools available in the currently loaded library. And the bottom pane indicates the strategy specific parameters. I want to add an end mill to this strategy so I can filter the library so it only displays end mills. And then I can select the quarter inch end mill. When I select it, you can see that it's added to the strategy here. I can also see that it's being used for the rough cut and the default depth is zero. Another thing you'll notice is that while the depth is zero, the OK button is disabled. If I increase the depth, now the OK becomes enabled. When I click OK, I can see that a routing offset is applied to my letters. There are more parameters I can fine tune for this cut, like the depth, the passes, and the feeds and speeds. And right now, this toolpath is going to be mostly using the default values. But I wanted to show that it can literally be that easy, that all you have to do is define the depth, and you can create a toolpath. I'm going to delete these toolpaths using the Delete Toolpath button. Another type of toolpath is the Hatch Fill. So I'm going to select the first letter to apply a Hatch Fill to, and then activate it from the menu. I want to use an end mill for this cut, which I already have loaded. I have my eighth inch end mill, which I'm using to do a fill cut at a depth of 0.2 inches. I'm going to click OK. You can see that a fill is applied to the W. You can see that the Hatch Fill toolpath is going to move the tool back and forth across the surface of the contour to mill it down. Another common use of the hatch fill is if I have a contour around my letters and I want to mill out the area in between the contour and the letters, I can select them all and apply the same hatch fill. And you can now see that the area between the letters and the bounding contour is milled out by the hatch fill. Another type of fill is the island fill. It achieves the same result as the hatch fill, but it uses a different pattern to create the fill. You can see that the toolpaths move outwards from the internal contours rather than moving side to side across the entire piece. The different fill pattern might be a better choice for different material types, or it can be used to create a desirable surface finish. A drill is another type of toolpath. In its simplest form, a drill point is a single point that can be placed anywhere in the workspace. But there are other tools that can also create drill points in circles, arrays, you can drill at the center of contours, drill along contours, or drill at the corners of the defined plate. Most often, you'll likely place drill points individually or in arrays. I'm going to create a single drill point. I'm going to use a drill tool for this, but any tool is capable of creating drill points. I can specify the coordinates of the drill point down here, or I can specify them graphically. And when I click OK, I can see that my cursor now indicates that I'm ready to create drill points. Whenever I left click, I now create a drill point using the parameters I specified. And then I can right click to exit the tool. The slot tool is a way to create straight cut toolpaths. I need to pick a tool capable of creating a slot toolpath, so I'm going to choose an end mill. Similar to the other drill tools, I need to specify a depth. And I can either specify the starting and end coordinates here, or I can choose to place them graphically. Now, when I left click and drag in the workspace, I can create slot toolpaths and then I can right click to exit the tool. Next up is the engrave toolpath strategy. There are 2D engraves and 3D engraves which will create two very different results. A 2D engrave will follow the contours engraved to the specified depth, which can be done with any tool, but it is especially useful when using a shaped tool like a conic. I'm going to select my 90 degree conic and engrave to a depth of a quarter of an inch. When I hit apply, you can see that the toolpath is following the contours I have selected. If I simulate the output in 3D, you can see how the conic tool has engraved the letters. I'm going to remove these toolpaths. Let's look at a 3D engrave. For this option, I'm only going to select the letters. A 3D toolpath requires a tool that is capable of engraving, which would be a conic, an engrave, or a tapered tool. For special cases, a ball-in tool can also be used. When I enable the 3D engrave option, the external and internal options also become available. 
I'm going to check the internal option for this and apply these parameters. The main thing to notice here is that the toolpath is moving up into the corners within the contours. This allows the tool to follow the contour much more closely than the 2D engrave. If I simulate this again in 3D, you can see the difference it makes in the corners. There's some additional material left in the middle by the 3D engrave cut, which I can remove by adding in a fill in the clean pass. I can remove these toolpaths and apply the same settings except externally. And you can see the result is about what you would expect with the tool moving up into the internal corners. The pyramid tool is a specialty tool that creates beveled letters using a conic tool. If I get into the pyramid strategy and add a conic tool, you'll notice that the depth is automatically calculated. I can then specify the return height down here to set the position of the letters from the bottom of the plate. And when I hit apply, you'll notice that the tool paths are applied into the plate depending on the return height I specified. Those are the primary tool paths within Unroute. There are a few that I didn't cover that function similarly to the main strategies, like the open contour routing offset, which creates routing offsets for open contours. There's also the curve compensation tool, which is primarily used to generate tool paths for water jet and plasma machines with a few specific features to those machines. There are many ways that these tool paths can be used to cut out designs. Multiple tools can be used within a single strategy, and you can also apply multiple strategies to the same geometry. For example, you could apply a pyramid toolpath to shape the letters and then apply a routing offset to cut them out. This is a quick introduction to toolpaths in Unroute. Be sure to check out the Unroute knowledge base and the right-click movies for each toolpath strategy for more information.